There are two things that we struggle with every day. And no, it's not your partner, nor is it a work colleague. It's a tug of war that we have with managing distractions and staying focused. But what if I told you you did not have to struggle with distractions and that you could have peace and purpose by being smart lazy? Now, let me explain. Smart lazy frees up your time. It increases your focus on the things that matter the most. And no, you do not have to take things off your schedule, nor do you have to give up social media. Before I explain this further, I would like for us to do a self-assessment. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and I'd like for you to make a mental note as to how many times you said yes. Are you ready? Question one, have you ever gone on Netflix or a different video streaming service provider to watch one episode and suddenly multiple episodes have gone by? <laughs> have you ever replied to your emails or checked your social media and suddenly you have no clue where the time went? Have you ever tried to work on an important activity with a deadline, but you just couldn't motivate yourself to do it and instead picked up your phone? scrolled, or played a video game? Have you ever executed a series of tasks but didn't get the outcome you expected? And last, do you hang on to stress by constantly playing out scenarios of the day in your head, unable to let it go? If you said yes to most or all of these, then you are struggling with distractions, and you may not even realize it. And I categorize these distractions as the white noise of life. Now, what is the white noise of life? It's general busyness. It's going with the flow without thought. It even wears the mask of productivity. But ultimately, they all keep us stuck without us realizing in the white noise. Now, how do we get out of this mindless way of being? Well, by being smart lazy. Now, I know this sounds counterintuitive, but I'm going to share with you an approach that has changed my life, that has made me smart lazy. But first, I have a story to tell you. It's a story of my good friend, Julie. Julie is a single mom. She has a beautiful eight-year-old son, Jamie, and she has a goal in life to have a much better relationship with her son than she had with her own mom. Now, Julie, on this particular day, had one of those worst days at work ever. If everything could go wrong, it went wrong. And she kept on replaying those scenarios over and over in her head. She just couldn't wait to leave work. And when she did, she went to daycare, she picked up Jamie, and then finally Jamie and her arrived home, and it was 6 p.m. when she did. And at this point, Jamie, again, eight-year-old boy, is saying, Mommy, Mommy, I'm so hungry. And Julie's like, sweetie, I know you know what, I had the worst day ever. I need to take off these clothes and I have to not think about the day. Just go play a video game. I will be down in one minute and I will promise I'll make dinner. So Jamie goes, plays a video game. Julie goes upstairs and she starts to change. Now, as she's changing, she notices a stain on her brand new shirt that she bought and she can't believe it. She's like, oh my goodness, I need to address this because if I don't, it's gonna set in. This is a really important, expensive shirt. I don't want to get it ruined. So she makes a choice at that particular point in time that she's going to deal with it right there and then. Now, she's not just going to wash one shirt. She's going to be efficient. So she goes, gets some clothes. She changes, picks everything up, decides to go into Jamie's room as well. Why not? Do a full load. She gets the full load. Then she sees some toys on the floor, picks up those toys, throws them in the toy box, goes downstairs. As she goes downstairs, she opens up the door to the washer. And what does she see? last night's clean load of laundry. <laughs> she hates laundry. That's one thing Jamie and I both agree on. We can't stand it. She's like, oh, I can't believe I did that. Fine, fine. So she goes to the dryer to open that, and you won't believe it. <laughs> There's a clean load in there, too. Now she's trying to find a laundry basket. She can't find a laundry basket. So she's like, you know what? I'm just going to fold them. I'm just going to fold the clothes. So she goes in. She folds the clothes. She takes now the clean clothes from the washer, she throws it in the dryer, closes the door, turns it on. She now deals with the clothes that she just brought from upstairs. She picks them up, puts them in the washer, takes her shirt, does a stain treatment, throws that in too, boom, 
turns on the washer. And for the first time today of her day, she's feeling good. It's like, oh my goodness, I got so much done in just a very short period of time, yay. Particularly when she had such a bad day. So she goes into the kitchen to make dinner and you know what she sees? Jamie with a bag of chips at the kitchen counter. She loses it. Jamie, how many times have I told you never to eat before dinner and particularly potato chips? I told you it was only gonna be a minute and at the corner of the eye, what does she see? On the oven clock, it's 6.30. A whole half hour has gone by. What did J Julie do that was wrong and got her the end result of her yelling at Jamie? It's not what you think, because the answer is nothing. The answer is nothing, because individually, those tasks that she did was fine. But you're probably saying to Adriana, how is that even possible? She yelled at her son. Sometimes distractions are not what we do, but how we do it, or the sequencing of events that we do them in. And it really is about changing our mindset, a mindset to be smart and lazy. And the method that I use to be smart and lazy is the MVP approach. Now, MVP is not just for elite athletes. It's for you, it's for me. But it stands for something different. It stands for mindfulness, visioning, and prioritization. So let's take a look at the MVP approach from the standpoint of Julie's day. Mindfulness. Let's all get on the same page as to what mindfulness is. Mindfulness is the ability to be fully present, aware of where we are, what we're doing, and not overly reactive or overwhelmed by what is going on around us. This is the cornerstone to the MVP approach. Why? Remember what I told you earlier on about the white noise? It's the busyness. It's going with the flow without thought. It even gets masked as productivity. And what mindfulness does is it detaches us from the white noise. It allows us to be grounded and brings us to the present moment so that we're not overwhelmed and we're not reactive. Now, what could have Julie have done? Look, she was definitely in the white noise. She came home, she was replaying the date in her head constantly. Now, when she came in, what she could have done is taken some mindful breaths. Because that is one of the simplest techniques of mindfulness that you can do. Now, what is a mindful breath, you're probably wondering. It's very simple taking slow, deep, deliberate belly breaths in the lungs, holding it, and exhaling it out and doing this as many times as you need in order to detach. And that is something that Julie could have easily done to bring her to the present moment so she can actually focus on what was truly important. Now, this brings me to the next aspect of the MVP, which is visioning. Let's all get on the same page with visioning. It's to the development of a plan, goal, or vision for the future. Every single person needs a personal vision statement. And I want you to think of your personal vision statement as your Google Maps for life. Why? Because we all have destinations that we want to get to, and we need some clear direction on how to get there. Now, what do I mean by that? Think of it this. Think of you having a very important job interview on the east end of town. You have no clue where the east end of town is that well, because you're really new to where the city is that you live. Do you just hop in your car and head east, hoping for the best, crossing your fingers? No, what do you do? The night before, you probably go on Google Maps, you look it up, you wanna see how much time it's gonna take you so you can leave at the appropriate time. You probably even look at the weather to figure out what you're going to wear. And the next day, when you do hop in your car, you probably put those coordinates into some sort of navigation system so you can get there on time and not be stressed. Yet in life, we head east all the time, and we have no clue where we're going, and then we wonder why things don't turn the way we expect them to. Now, Julie had a going east statement, and that was she wanted a much better relationship with her son than she had with her mom, but she did not have a vision statement, so what did that mean? 
what Julie could have done was actually get herself a personal vision statement, get really clear on what was truly important to her and get some direction around that. Even better yet, she could do a visual vision statement and take all of that wonderful concept and put it in imagery and color because we all know a picture is worth a thousand words. Now, let's put in the context of Julie's day. Julie is leaving work. She is wrapped up. She's in the white noise. And I want you to know you will not escape white noise. But what you can do is you can learn how to detach from it, which is why the MVP approach is so critical. So Julie's coming in through the day. She is all wrapped up. She walks through her door. And boom, the first thing she sees is her visual vision statement. It stops her in her tracks. Right away, immediately, it reminds her of everything that is really important to her. At the same time, because that's her trigger, she takes some mindful breaths. So she can get out of the white noise. She can detach from the day that was so caught up for her. And at the same time, there's Jamie. Mommy, mommy, I'm so hungry. And this leads me to the last part of the MVP, prioritization. So let's talk and define that so we're all on the same page. What is prioritization is to decide which of a number of different jobs or tasks are most important or urgent and to deal with them first. In today's society, we have lost the distinction of important and urgent. In fact, urgency rules. So much so that urgency in some mind's eye is importance. And that has a detrimental impact on the decisions we make when we only think that urgency is important. Now, let's look at the context of Julie. Remember, when she came in, the whirlwind of the day, what did she do? The first thing she needed to do was change. Why? Because the day's activity. Now, in her mind's eye, she thought that was important. But as we know and understand the outcome that it presented, is it wasn't, it was just urgent. And yet, that urgency gave her the wrong result. Now, let's put back in the context of Julie and the story. So here's Julie, whirlwind of the day. Of course, you're going to have a white noise. She walks in the house, boom, sees a visual vision statement, right away starts doing her mindful breaths to ground her. She's being reminded of what's important. And there's Jamie, mommy, 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 I'm so hungry. And this is where prioritization comes in. She chooses to go into the kitchen with her work clothes on, because now she's detached from the white noise. And she goes in the kitchen, she goes, here, sweetie, here's an apple to tide you over. And she starts prepping her dinner, and she puts it in the oven. And then she goes upstairs and changes, and does every single task she did before. The difference here is that her prioritization was linked to what was important to her. Because if Julie just followed the MVP approach, she would have had a much different outcome that evening with her son, Jamie. It would have been aligned to her goals, what was really important to her. Remember, mindfulness, visioning, and productivity will only make your life easy and keep you focused on things that truly matter. You do not want to get stuck in the white noise of life, where one day you wake up wondering, where did time go? Or worse yet, why aren't I achieving my goals? Because it all comes down to shifting the way we think and to start being smart lazy. Thank you.